to get to X, Y, and Z. But your buddy who was also up for, for the promotion went through W, X, Y, Z. Took the extra step to get on the right path. And he got the promotion and you did it. Were you pissed? Yeah. Why? Why are you pissed? It's not, it's not his fault. It's your fault. You took the easy way out. You took the wide road. You didn't take the narrow road. I don't know how else to, to break that down. Uh, I think that you have to understand. Let me just read a couple of them. I got them right here. Uh, Well, I lost my nose. Hold on a second. Anyway, Jesus Jesus tells somebody to follow him, and the guy says, "Let me let me bury my let me bury my father." Jesus tells him, "Let the dead bury their own dead. You gonna follow me? You need to come on and go right now." We all know the dead don't bury the dead. What's he telling him? He's telling him, "Let the non-believers." Bury the dead. The believers need to come on with me. Okay? The dead, the dead are gone. They're already in heaven or in hell. They found their place one way or another. The non-believers can stay behind and bury the dead. The believers need to get up and follow me. Carry their own cross. Let's go. Get up and move. That seems pretty harsh when the guy asked to bury his daddy. But Jesus says, if you're going to be my true disciple, you have to hate all of that. You have to put me first. I have no idea. fishermen that are that are fishing in the boat and Jesus says drop your nets and come with me they just left their dad in the boat with all the nets and got out and said okay here we go that's faith if Jesus were to walk in this room right now and pose a hard question to any of us what would we do I'm up here bringing you this word and I don't know what I would do. And that scares me because I don't know the answer. I would like to say I'd jump off this stage and follow Jesus, but yeah, I don't know. Jesus, Jesus told some people some pretty rough stuff. If you want to follow me, you've got to do this. And man, that's, that's a heck of an ultimatum. But I also believe that once you find that door and you find those green pastures he promised you, it doesn't matter where you are. You have got the green pasture. You stay on the narrow path, you find the narrow gate, and you stay together. You do everything you can do that's in your power to keep the herd together. If the herd gets scattered, the thief is going to steal, kill, and destroy. When Adam and Eve started this whole party off, the thief was in the garden. He was a snake. In this particular pas uh, passage, Jesus is referring to the thief as a wolf. And we're the sheep. And with Jesus crucified, gone, and out of the way, the devil started picking us off one by one. Sheep are timid animals, unless you throw a little kid up on their back. <laughs> then they tend to buck quite a bit. But, uh, Sheep see a wolf, 
They're going to take off running. If the devil walk through the door right now, a bunch of us are going to get up and start running. But listen to me when I tell you there's strength in numbers. We lock arms, we hold hands, we love on each other. We listen to the word every Sunday and Wednesday night. We get stronger in our faith. We start revealing to each other our armor that God gave us. And we stand together. One unified body. And know that Jesus is coming to protect us from anything that may do us harm. As we uh we get ready to close this thing, yeah, band, y'all come on up. Uh, again, I you know I keep emphatically stating to Miss Linda that I am not a preacher, and yet I caught myself doing it again today. Matt got a little, you should have seen the look on his face when I pointed at him and asked him how I hurt his feelings and told him we need to get over it. I was like, what? I didn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, I love you guys. Jesus loves you guys. And know that Jesus is coming to protect you from everything that could possibly do you harm. Jesus came, is coming to give you life and of more abundance. All you have to do is find the door. All right, let's close in prayer. I'm going to bless the food while we're at it. And then uh, I hope everybody gets to stay today in fellowship and, and enjoy lunch with us. And uh, Last time I was in there, there was about 14, 15 pots and pans, so it looks like it's going to be a good one. But thank y'all for being here and let's go to the Lord. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being our protection. Father, thank you for being the good shepherd who keeps us all together, Father. Because we now understand that there is strength in numbers, Father. And we understand that if we get scattered by the thief, Father, that we can be picked off one by one. Father, I pray for our nation right now to be able to hear that message, Father, be able to hear your word, Father, and come together as one unified body of believers. Father, if everyone stands together, locks arms, holds hands, and loves on each other, Father, there's nothing, nothing that that old thief can do to us, Father. You are a gracious God. You are the good shepherd. You are the door. You are the gate. You are the light. You are the way. Father, I ask right now that each and every person here today, whether they received a card, whether they didn't receive a card, whether they filled out their card, whether they didn't fill out their card, Father, that they just feel your presence right here, right now, and come to know you as the door. Father, I ask at this time if you would uh, bless our fellowship this afternoon. Father, bless this food as nourishment to our bodies, as your word is nourishment to our souls. Father, we sure do love you. We sure do need you, Father. I just pray that everyone can come together and under that same belief, Father, and make a difference here in Santa Fe, Texas. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.